And he's going to all those that's been rejected, those druggies, those people the church have kicked out, those people who have been neglected. He's going right now and he's wanting to heal their lives. Amen. That's how Amen. glorious Jesus Amen. is. Amen. Oh, and I'm afraid that if the church doesn't receive what he's trying to tell us, that he's going to just leave those 99 and go after that one sheep out there. Yeah. Because the church has become so religious and traditional and full of programs yeah. that we want the Holy Spirit move in the church. Come on. Yeah. So He'll move out there on the homeless and those broken down and pick them up, even though He's doing that anyway. But there's a lot of boxes that have a box and they have a form of worship but deny the power thereof. Yes. A form of godliness but not the power. Yeah. He said that would happen in the last days. I believe we're in the last days. 2 yeah. Thessalonians chapter 2 said there will be a great falling away. I believe there's a great falling away now. People are running after men's books instead of the Word of God. Amen. They'd rather communion with a fiction fable yeah. instead of communion with the truth of the living God. That's right. Amen. And what happens is you're led astray by the person who wrote the fiction. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. And when the king came to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how did you think you could come in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away. And cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The wedding garment. Now, this lets you know that all roads do not lead to heaven. Amen. Even though they're trying to plant that in many people's minds right now, by saying, you don't pray in the name of Jesus, we're just going to say God. You don't say Jesus. <laughs> that we all worship the same God. Let's come together in a peace treaty, which has happened this weekend. They're trying to get the, what they call the Abrahamic faith of the Jews, Islam, and Christianity together, all in one core. Mm. Like I was saying a while ago, a man named Rick Warren wrote a book named Purpose Driven Life. Everybody <laughs> fell for it. Now he's building a one world religion called Christ Law. Islam and Christianity together. Trying to put Christianity and Islam together is trying to put like oil and water together. Amen. It doesn't work. Don't work. One is Antichrist, the other devil. And Jesus is the only way, truth, and life. Right. John 14, Amen. 6. Mm -hmm. But they won't stand on that. They want to build this thing that is ungodly. So people are putting a garment on that they believe is going to bring them in to the wedding feast. And so they're trying to enter in with the wrong garment. There's three garments that people desiring to enter into heaven are trying to wear at this time. You've got the Christ righteousness, you've got self-righteousness, and you've got the unrighteousness. And those are the three garments people are trying to wear. There's only one that's going to take you in, and that's Christ righteousness. However, the most unpopular, the most popular right now is unrighteousness. People are trying to put an unrighteous garment on when God says, Be ye holy as I am holy. Amen. And God says, Well, you're just trying to preach your own doctrine. That's why I've got many, many scriptures to read to you this morning because I don't want to give you what I say about this. I want to give you what the Word of God says about this. Because when you are saved, when the Holy Spirit comes into your life, the first thing He starts <laughs> doing you, He starts, starts doing, excuse me, starts showing you the love of God. And as He shows you the love and the mercy and compassion of God, He starts cleaning you up. Uh -huh. It's called sanctification process. And He takes the Word and He washes you and cleanses you. You are justified and made righteous through what Jesus paid for at the cross. But there is a sanctification taking place. That's why the Word of God would say this, 1 Corinthians 10, 21 and 22. You cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than He? You cannot do both. You cannot dwell in sin, a lifestyle of sin. All of us fall short from time to time, but I'm talking about a lifestyle. I'm talking about a day-to-day, -day, a week-to-week -week thing. Dwelling in this thing and living this life and partaking of the table of the devil and still saying, okay, I'm going to take of uh, the Lord's table also. That's the wrong garment. That's the one the man was wearing, thought he was wearing, and father didn't say.
see nothing but Him. You see, if you're not covered by the blood of the Lamb, if you're covered by this unrighteous garment, then you've got no covering at all. Father God looks at you, He sees that sin. But if you're covered by the blood of the Lamb, when He looks upon us, He sees His Son. That's the garment we're supposed to have. Yeah, that's the garment we're supposed to have. But there are people that's letting Satan lead their lives, letting Satan have authority over their lives, living an ungodly lifestyle, calling good evil and evil good, as it says in Malachi 2.17. All through the whole body of Christ today. So they call themselves in the body of Christ. But the Word of God tells us different. You can't do both. When you receive the Holy Spirit, the first thing He starts doing is convicting you. He convicts you to apologize. He convicts you. You feel it inside. Lord, I forgive me. You realize what you really are. And then you realize the grace and the mercy of God. Because He's giving you that invitation. We're unworthy to have the invitation, but He still gives us the invitation. Amen. But it's not to leave you in the condition He found you in. He loves you too much to leave you in the condition He found you in. But some of us are staying in that condition. And there are churches that's even ordained homosexual bishops. People. A lifestyle of sin lets you know whose father is yours. Like, who's your daddy? First John makes it clear. First John 3, 5 says this. And you know that He was manifested to take away our sins. Y'all hear that? He was manifested to do what? Take away our sins. Take away our sins. And in Him is no sin. Whosoever abides in Him sins not. That means they do not practice sin on a daily basis. Whosoever sins, lifestyle of sin that is, has not seen Him, neither known Him, Little children, let no man deceive you. He who does righteousness is righteous, even as he, Christ Jesus, is righteous. He who commits sin, which lives in the lifestyle of sin, is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was made manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's exactly what he's trying to do in me and you. Yes. destroy the works of the devil that planted that Satan seed inside your heart that causes that sin nature to rise up and do something wrong. Man, he destroys that. He puts the love of God inside of you where the love is functioning, praise God, and the fruits of the Holy Spirit are being made manifest. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Not the fruits of the flesh. We Christians got to get a hold of this because there's many people that think they're going in to the wedding banquet. Hmm, let me keep reading. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. That means purposely practice sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin. What? That means you cannot live that lifestyle because God, you will feel the conviction and you'll feel even the condemnation. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You will repent and let that thing go. You will turn from it. Mm -hmm. Even when the temptation comes, you want to turn from it. That's what he's saying. Then how come there's people that desire to live in it? Well, I can smoke my weed daily. I can do my cocaine daily. Do you know they got a new cocaine now out there in California that rots your nose off? Mm -hmm. I said the other day, rots your ears off. Continue in that thing, and you'll find out what death is. Oh, that's 